Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnichi. I'm CCNA and CCNP certified instructor. Today we are covering CCNA semester 4, Connecting Networks. This is chapter 2, Connecting to the Wide Area Network. Chapter 2, Connecting to the Wide Area Network Objectives. Section 2.1, Wide Area Network Technologies Overview. In here we describe the purpose of one, describe the one operations, then we describe the one services available, we compare various private one technologies, and then we compare the various public one technologies. Then we move on to section 2.2, we select the one, one technology, select the appropriate one protocol and services for specific network requirement. Okay, let's start section 2.1, wide area network technologies overview. Why a wide area network? A wide area network operates beyond the geographic scope of land. Ones are used to interconnect the enterprise LAN to remote LANs in a branch site and telecommuter sites. A one is owned by a service provider. An organization must pay a fee to, the u to use the provider's network services to connect remote sites. Wide area network service providers include carriers such as telephone network, cable company or satellite services. In contrast, LANs are typically owned by the organization and used to connect local computer, peripherals and other devices within a single building or other small geographical area. Are wide area network necessary? Business require communication among geographically separated sites. Examples include regional or branch offices must be able to communicate and share data. Organization must share information with other customer organizations. Mobile workers must access information that resides on corporate networks. Home computer users must send and receive data across increasingly large distances. Examples include consumers communicate over the internet with banks, stores, and a variety of a provide providers of goods and services. Students do research by accessing library indexes and publications located in other parts of the country and in other parts of the world. So yeah, why every networks are necessary. Businesses use it for buying, selling stuff, and as well as talking to other branches we as a users we use it to do our banking we use it to uh, do our research for students so wide area networks are definitely necessary wide area network operations one is an in the osi model one operates focus operations focus primarily on the physical layer osi layer one and the data link layer osi layer two so the two layers that wide area networks work on is layer 1 and layer 2. In the TCP IP model is network access. Wide area network access standards typically describe both physical layer delivery methods and data link layer requirements including physical addressing, flow control and encapsulation. Layer 1 protocols describe how to provide electrical mechanical, operational and functional connections to the services of the communication service provider. Layer 2 protocols define how data is encapsulated for transmission towards a remote location and the mechanism for transferring the resulting frames. A variety of different technologies are used such as point-to-point -point protocol, PPP, frame relay and ATM. We will cover in chapter 3 point-to-point -point protocol and chapter 4 frame relay. Common wide area network terminologies. One primary difference between a wide area network and local area network is that a company or, or organization must subscribe to an outside wire, wide area network service provider to use the one carrier network services. A wide area network uses data link provides by carrier services to access the internet and connect different locations of an organization to each other, to location of other organization, to external services and to the remote users. The physical layer of wide area network describes a physical connection between the company network 
and service provider network. Terminology commonly used to describe the wide area network connection include, included, we have a customer premises equipment, or CPE for short. The subscriber either owns the CPE or leases the CPE from the service provider. A subscriber in the context, in this context, is a company that arranges for one services from a service provider. Data communication equipment, DCE, also called data circuit terminating equipment. The DCE connect uh, consists of a device that puts the data on the local loop. The DCE is a primarily, uh, primarily provides an interface to connect subscriber to communication link on the cloud, on the one cloud. DTE, data terminal equipment, the customer device that passes the data from the customer network or host computer for transmission over the wide area network. The DTE connects to the local loop through the DCE. So, in here we have a customer premises equipment. You will have a device that usually your service provider will send to you and that is called data communication equipment. Through that device we will send data to the local loop. For example, as a user, me, the service provider will send you a modem for example and using that modem we can send data to the, words, the service provider. The device that we connect to that DCE is called our device or our router is called DTE. Remember DCE when you configure it with this where you configure the clock. The clock rate always is provided by DCE or data communication equipment. Demarcation point. A point established in a building to separate customer equipment from a service provider equipment. It is usually placed for easy access by a technician. The demarcation point is the place where the responsibility for the connection changes from the user to the service provider. So up to here for example, anything that happens a problem in this site is the service provider's uh, responsibility to correct it. If any problem happens in this side, then it's our responsibility. So the demarcation point is a point where we separate the responsibilities. Who has responsibility for what area? When problems arises, it is necessary to determine whether the user or the service provider is responsible for troubleshooting or repair. Local loop. Local loop, the actual copper or fiber cable that connects the CPE to the CO, to the central office of the service provider. The local loop is also sometimes called the last mile. Central office, the CO is the local service provider facility or building that connects the CPE, customer premises equipment, to the provider's network. Toll network, this consists of a long haul, all digital, fiber optic communication line switches routers and other equipment inside the wide area network providers network. Wide area network devices. We have a dial-up modem. This is considered to be in a legacy wide area network technology, a voice band modem. If you remember, well, if you're as old as me, you would remember that we used to use the modems to connect to the internet. Now, once you use the modem, to connect a dial-up modem to connect to the internet, you couldn't use anymore your phone line because they, it was using everything. It was using a whole phone line to connect to the internet. So that's why it's called a voice band modem. Access server, this as well is considered to be legacy technology. An access server might have a mixture of analog and digital interfaces and supports hundreds of simultaneous users. For example, if we were teleworkers, uh, this is our teleworker computer, and we dial it up to the, uh, our network, for example, our at work, the access server is in charge of these modems. An access server will give you a line. When you dial up, the access server will control that line that you are uh, establishing to get to the inside the network. Broadband modem, a type of digital modem used for high-speed DSL, digital subscriber line, or cable internet services. Routers provides internet working and wide area network access interface ports that are used to connect to the service provider network. Core routers, a router or multi-layer switch that resides within the middle of the backbone of the wide area network. 
we have a CSU DSU device it can be separate device like a modem or it can be an inter interface on a router the CSU provides a termination for digital signal and ensures connection integrity through the error correction and line monitoring the DSU converts the line frames into frames that the LAN can interpret and vice versa a wide area network switch a multi-port internet working device used in service provider network circuit switch a circuit switch network is one that establishes a dedicated circuit or channel between nodes and terminals before the users may communicate it's like your phone calls when you dial someone then you're building a circuit yeah but before you before you can transfer any data the device has to ring the, the dial of device the other device has to ring then the connection has to be established but then we can start transferring data specifically circuit switching dynamically establishes a dedicated virtual connection for voice or data between a sender and receiver before communications can start like I said it is necessary to establish the connection through the network of the service provider as an example when a subscriber makes a telephone call the dial number is used to set the switches in the exchange along the route of the call so that there is a continuous circuit from the caller to the caller part to the call party the two most common types of circuit switched wide area network technologies are the public switch telephone network PSDN and integrated service digital network ISDN packet switching in contrast to circuit switching packet switching splits traffic data into packets that are routed over a shared network packet switching networks do not require to cir a circuit to be established the switches in a packet switch network determine the link that packet must be sent over based on the address information in each packet the following are two approaches to this link determination we have connectionless system full addressing information must be carried in each packet each switch must evaluate the address to determine where to send the packets an example of connectionless system is the internet connection oriented systems the network predetermines the route for a packet and each packet only has to carry an identifier the switch determines the onward route by looking up the identifier in table held in a memory so packet switching in different to the circuit switching circuit switching like we looked at before it has one circuit pre-built circuit dynamically built and then we are sending data on that circuit right so if for example this link here breaks then you have to build another circuit in contrast the packet switching it will break the data so instead of sending it through only one link it will send them any path that they want they, they can take the packets can take any path that they want because each packet will have the identifier sorry will have the, the uh, full information full address information so that's called connectionless systems or you have a connection oriented where you have to predetermine the route like a circuit switching and each packet will have the identifier the set of entries in the table identifies a particular route a circuit through the system when the circuit is established temporarily while the packet is traveling through it and then the breakdown again it is called a virtual circuit or VC for short an example of connection oriented system is a frame relay in the case of frame relay the identifiers used are called data link connection identifier DLCS because the internal links between the switches are shared between many users the cost of packet switching is lower than the, that of the circuit switching however delays latency and variability of delay jitter are greater in the packet switch network than in the circuit switch network this is because of the linkets are shared and packets must be entirely received at one switch before moving to the next switch thank you for watching please have a look at other videos and don't forget to subscribe and next video is coming 2.2 selecting a wide area network technology thank you very much and goodbye